often hear students toss the words stocks and bonds around interchangeably, so I wanted to take some time to explain just what bonds are and how they can be used as an investment tool. Bonds are a company or country's way of financing debt. Unlike stocks, bonds are not a form of ownership in the company. Rather, if you own a bond, it's much like owning a promissory note from the issuer. Think of yourself as an American Express or Visa card. You are giving the entity, let's use the state of California as our example, a set amount of money with the promise that they will return it to you in a predetermined amount of time while paying you interest every six months. So by owning a bond, you aren't actually owning a piece of California. Rather, you are owning a piece of California's debt. In exchange for this, California is going to pay you that interest. Now, interest rates will vary dramatically with the risk of the entity. So, for example, if I were to be purchasing a bond from the country of Greece or Spain, I might expect to receive a higher interest rate because there is a high possibility the bonds would never be repaid. They will be rated very low because they have a high prospect of default. U.S. bonds, on the other hand, are generally rated much higher because our country has yet to default on its payments. And this is why the debt ceiling debates in Congress raise such concern. If the U.S. were to default on its interest payments, the country's bond rating would be lowered, and more interest would be required to entice investors to purchase future bonds. It would also affect current investors who hold U.S. bonds, because they would not be able to trade their existing holdings at a desirable price. So how do you purchase a bond? First, bonds are introduced to the market in the form of an IPO or initial public offering. Most investors do not purchase those bonds directly from the IPO. It's much more cost effective for companies to go for, for individuals to go straight to the big institutional investors. The exception to this is the purchase of government bonds, where any investor can purchase directly from the US tre Treasury and no brokers are needed. After the initial offering, investors may buy or sell bonds on the second market through brokers. You can view the secondary market kind of like a used car market, where once new bonds are now sold secondhand to in individual investors. This is where many students start getting a bit confused with the concepts of yields and market value. You might hear reports that bond prices are increasing, so yields are going down. Or more recently, you've probably heard bond yields are up as the bond prices are decreasing. Bond yields and prices are inversely related. Think of a seesaw. As prices are increasing, yields are decreasing. They fluctuate inversely. Why? Well, let's use our California bond as an example. Say the face value of the bond is $1,000. It's paying a 10% coupon rate. And we know this means it's paying $100, a regular payment of $100 per year, usually split between two equal payments. At the end of the predetermined period, the full $1,000 is returned to the bondholder. But the market value can change. The bond can sell on the secondary market for more than or less than $100. If it is trading for less than a thousand, I'm sorry, I meant $1,000. If it is trading for less than $1,000, it is being traded at a discount. If it's being traded at a higher price, then its face value is being traded at a premium. During this whole process, the face value and coupon rate will remain fixed. We know it will be paying $100 regardless until it matures. So if we bought the bond for $1,000, its yield is 10%. But let's say we were able to buy the bond at a discount, say $800. If we pay $800 for the same bond, we will still be collecting our interest of $100. So now our yield is much more than 10%. It's 13%. That's why when the bond prices decrease, our yield increases. You're getting more for your money. Now let's look what happens if we purchase this California bond at a premium. If bought at a premium, let's say the market price is $1,200. We know our yield will be less. We will still receive that $100 each year based on the coupon rate, but it's less than 10% of the purchase price of the bond. So in this case, the bond price increased but the percentage yield decreased. Why would people pay more or less for the same bond? It all comes down to supply and demand. If the demand is low, there aren't as many investors looking to purchase bonds, so the price of bonds decreases.
when the price decreases, the yield increases. Again, that inverse correlation takes place between bond prices and yields. When the stock market is in terminal, turmoil, investors look for the bond market and vice versa. So when the stock market is doing great, investors are going to move their money from the bond market to the stock market. And that, again, affects those bonds price, bond prices and yields. Bonds and other U.S. dollar-backed investments are seen as a safer investment option to volatile stock markets. But when the U.S. economy is in turmoil and confidence in its economic stability is low, you'll often see the bond market start to struggle too. In most cases, bond prices move in the opposite direction of stock prices. So bonds zig when the stocks zag. And over the long term, this is ideal. You'll have your bond investment gains offset your stock investment losses and vice versa. You'll have an overall more diverse portfolio and a lot less risk. So let's presume that you have a wonderful, perfect, beautiful portfolio, including the bond from that state of California. And you've lost confidence in the state's growth plan and you need to diversify your portfolio a little bit more, so you wish to sell your bond. Five years ago, you purchased the $1,000 bond issued by the state of California, and the interest rate for the bond was 5%. Today, comparable bonds are paying 6%. So what is the approximate price you could sell your bond? I'd like you to think, is your bond going to sell for more or less than $1,000? Think back to the supply and demand. You're going to need these two equations to figure out the approximate dollar price you're going to sell your bond for. You need to know the amount of annual interest and your approximate market value. So put this lecture on pause and calculate your answer and press play when you've got it. Your answer should be $833.33. Your bond is worth, worth less than its face value because there is less demand for your bond. Invest, investors would rather buy the equivalent bond that's generating a whole 1% more than yours, so you would be selling your bond at a discount. I hope this brief overview helps you understand the bar, bond market a little bit better, but as always, if you have any questions, just ask.